G'day everybody, 1MJ here and welcome back. So Bitcoin's hanging on, it's a sad day here, we're just waiting to see, you know, what it's going to do and whether it'll sort of break the trend that it's been on lately. But I found a fairly interesting story here. Now we're all, you know, hoping that, uh, you know, blockchain, Bitcoin and all the rest of it is going to go mainstream. And it is slowly but surely happening. All the regulations that are happening over in the States and Europe, particularly with the banks being able to custody uh, cryptocurrencies and things like that. And another really interesting story here. So Switzerland, new law to bring Bitcoin and blockchain into the mainstream. Switzerland continues to take big steps towards becoming the leading crypto and blockchain hub in Europe. In order to achieve this, the Alpine country has already introduced numerous laws in the past to create the best possible conditions for the startup scene in the country. Yesterday, Switzerland passed a new far-reaching law that further opens the door for cryptocurrencies. It was announced yesterday after the National, after the National Council, the Council of the States, the second chamber of the Swiss Federal Assembly after the National Council, has voted for the new blockchain law with an overwhelming 42 to 0 vote. So everyone was on board. There was no one that didn't vote it down. Although the amendments still have to be put to the final vote for the end of September, this seems to be a mere formality so that the law will probably come to force at the beginning of next year. 42-0. So obviously the people in Switzerland, they want to get on the front foot with this. They want to be one of the ones leading the charge. They're all on board. Now again, that isn't the full vote. You know, amendments still have to be put forward, but everyone was on board. So well done, Switzerland. Basically, the Blockchain Act is intended to create more legal security and fewer obstacles for blockchain applications and to minimize abuse. In other words, the law aims to move cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology into the mainstream. To this end, the law covers the exchange of digital securities and sets standards for crypto exchanges. In concrete terms, for example, there should be facilitation for providers who only serve institutional or professional customers. In the future, they will not have to join an ombudsman office. In addition, a new framework for the commercial operation of DLT infrastructure will be created to limit the risk of abuse. Furthermore, the separation of cryptocurrencies from the bank rupsy estate will be legally clarified. So it looks like they're really thinking this through, getting all their ducks in a row before they just roll it out to the masses. Uh, and this is really forward thinking and smart thinking by Switzerland. Obviously, I'm a crypto fan, and if you're listening to my channel right now, you're probably a crypto fan. This is what needs to happen worldwide. There's always going to be those early adopters, and they will be the ones that will probably sort of lead the way. The ones that get on nice and quick, they'll have the you know first mover advantage and things like that. So it's not that Switzerland's the first, but they are getting ready to bring it to the mainstream. You know, hopefully Australia is you know going to get on the front foot. I know there's a lot of stuff happening with cryptocurrencies in Australia, uh, particularly in the sort of business industry and things like that. A lot of our big banks are hooked up with Ripple, and not that Ripple, you know, is uh, cryptocurrencies all by itself, but our big four are generally hooked up with them. And there, there's a lot of other stuff happening. And Power Ledger, you know, Gemma Green, uh, she's from Australia and she's been doing that. Uh, the guy from Synthetics Network who leads it, uh, Kane. He's an Australian, so it's good to see Australians getting involved, but we really need our government to get on board with cryptocurrencies. And again, we need to be leaders in some industries. We don't want to be sitting, you know, at the back waiting for everyone to go first. We want to get up, you know, in front of these things. But really good news for Switzerland and well done. Now, something that I found really interesting, so DeFi Pulse. So everyone was worried that DeFi was, you know, well, not everyone, but a lot of people anyway, were worried that DeFi was over. We got up to, what was this, nearly nine and a half, or it was just over nine and a half billion. And then we had this big pop and everyone got really worried. And on the 10th of September, we got down to nearly six billion. It's only two days later and we're nearly back at eight billion. So in two days, there's been nearly $2 billion worth jumping back into DeFi. DeFi is not dead. And I honestly don't think it's ever going to die. The really good platforms, the ones that are built with some substance and have been around for a while, I think they're going to be around for a long, long time. Ones like Aave, Maker, Curve Finance, I don't know, they haven't been around for that long, but, you know, they're there and they're doing well. Synthetics Network, I'm super bullish on Synthetics Network. 
are they as well? Are they, you know, there's lots of places that are doing really well. Carver's doing really well. Ren's doing really well. But this goes to show you that DeFi is not dead. And look, is it in a bubble? It's hard to call it in a bubble when it's only seven billion of three hundred and thirty billion dollars. So we go over here. The total market cap, there we go, we're nearly at 340 billion, so we're climbing back up. Only 7 billion of, of it is in DeFi. That's really minuscule amounts. But as we can see here, Bitcoin's doing well. Ethereum's up, we've got a green day here, that's awesome. But we still got Sunday to go, so I am still a little bit sort of hesitant. But let's have a look. We'll go here first. Where are some of the big movers? DeFi money. Yearn Finance, UMA, Loopring, big gainers, and a lot of them are coming from DeFi, but let's just have a look at the DeFi sector in general. We can see how they're doing. Oh, Chainlink, good, up 1%. Yearn Finance, we saw that, UMA, Ava's up 5%, Synthetics is up nearly 5%, Maker's up 2%, Loopring's up nearly 12%. Uh, Nexus Mutual is up nearly 20%. DeFi Money is up uh, 50%. Look, DeFi is not dead. DeFi is not dead at all. And DeFi, yeah, it's got a long way to go. Most of it's being built on Ethereum. So let's go have a look over here. We can see DeFi, uh, Ethereum, sorry. We've had this sort of key line of resistance here. So here uh, we've, we broke through it and then it came down. It was resistance there. And it was used as support here. It's been resistance here. We broke through it and then we fell below. And we can see where we are now. So really it's that kind of 360 uh, US dollar mark that is roughly, you know, it's been a key uh, sort of resistance point. Now we broke down below and we've pushed above and we're just waiting to see, are we going to hold? And if we hold, is this now going to be our new support? So, you know, a resistance support flip. You know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I am super bullish on Ethereum. I think it's probably going to be the best mover out of the big coins uh, in this bull run. You know, we'll have to wait and see, you know, what's it? Uh, XRP, you know, that has some unbelievable moves, but I'm just not sure if XRP is going to do the same thing it did in the last bull run and lead the way. We'll have to wait and see. I still believe in XRP. I still think it's going to do well, but I am super bullish on Ethereum. I think, you know, I put a tweet out the other day and it said, once upon a time, all roads led to Rome. Nowadays, all bridges are built to Ethereum. And it's so true. All these other DeFi platforms and all these other uh, platforms that are being made, you know, things like Cosmos, um, Polkadot, you know, you name it, EOS, Cardano, all of that, they are all making bridges to Ethereum. Not the other way around, but Ethereum doesn't need to worry because they're already doing the work for them. Everyone is building a bridge to get to Ethereum. So everyone was worried about, you know, Ethereum, it's not, uh, you know, agnostic and can't, you know, hook up with other chains all that well. Well, they don't need to because the other chains are going to hook up with them because everything's being built on Ethereum at the moment. So we're going to have to wait and see, can this hold? Is it going to use 360 US dollars as the new support range? Or could we possibly roll back over as well? Not sure, we'll have to wait and see. But USD, old Bitcoin, here we go. This is that line. And I did say on yesterday's video, are we gonna roll over and roll down or are we gonna break through? Well, we're gonna have to wait and see. Today's obviously not over yet. And over in the States, it's sort of just getting started. Are we going to break out or are we going to keep following this trend line? Are we going to roll down over and maybe come back down and test, you know, the $9,700 sort of level or will we come down and test, you know, the $9,100 sort of $9,000 level of the 200-day moving average? Very hard to know. We're just going to have to wait and see. But we are right on the cusp of possibly breaking out. And what I am hoping is that we break out and we get above this $10,500 level and we start to use this as support. That would be really, really good. But we can see here the 100-day moving average looks like it's being a little bit of support at the moment. But, you know, again, we're still going to have to wait and see. Do we break above this trend line or do we roll over and start making our way back down? 
Interesting times. Again, it's Saturday. We've still got Sunday to go. We haven't had any sort of major sell-offs this weekend, which has been pretty good. But the weekend's not over. You know, the, the sell-offs, you know, traditionally do come on weekends. There's a bit of a sell-off. People take some money for the weekends and just take some profits and all the rest of it. But it's not every weekend that it happens. So it didn't happen on Friday. Today's Saturday and it doesn't appear to have happened now. So we've got to wait and see. Does it happen Sunday? Is Sunday the day where we roll over and, you know, sell off a little bit? Anyway, interesting times. I'm loving the weekend at the moment. You know, uh, long term, we just got to zoom out. And I've said this before. Yes, we might be on a little bit of a downtrend here. But we are on an upward trend in general. And if we zoom out even more, as we can see, we've been in an upward market basically since forever Bitcoin sort of came out really. As you can see, yes, there's retracements where it pulls back. That's what happens in all markets. It's not just a Bitcoin market, it's all markets. And we just gotta wait and see where it goes. Well, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.